Hi everyone, it's Annette and welcome back to Cotto Verdi. Uh, today I'm going to give you a tour of the back garden and I'm just going to show you the things that are looking really beautiful at the moment and also some areas where we've had failures and what I'm going to do about that. So I'm going to start with this bed here behind me and this is um, I guess what we like to call the corridor bed because it runs along this glazed corridor that we have on the back of our property. So in this bed I've got um, two box balls that I pruned in an earlier video which you can find on my channel but they are constantly being attacked by the box tree moth caterpillar and being eaten and I'm a bit fed up with them and I will be replacing them next year um, but for now they're in there just looking a little bit moth eaten or caterpillar eaten um, also in this bed <laughs> So also in this bed we have some Cheshire Roses, so I've got two Cheshire Roses in the bed behind me and then another Cheshire Rose on the other side and the problem that we're having this year is that we are having incredible deer pressure and even though we live in a walled garden what we're finding is that one side of our garden where we've planted a yew hedge it's our boundary with our neighbours and the walled garden is actually part of a massive kitchen garden that belongs to the large house that we live nearby and we've sort of got uh, maybe just under two thirds of the walled garden and they've got a bit of the walled garden and the boundary of our two properties runs in the middle of this walled garden and it's been separated by this yew hedge which is a very long way of saying that the deer are coming through the yew hedge from our neighbour's property and eating everything in my garden this year and we have never had deer pressure like this. It's so frustrating and in the next few weeks we will be putting up a deer fence and I will try to film that process for you just to show you what we're doing and how we do it. When I say we, um, it won't actually be us, we're going to get some people in to do it so if they're okay with me filming it then that's what I'll do but I'd really like to show you the difference that we've chosen and um, what we're putting up. So as we go around the garden I'll show you everything the deer are eating and um, things that they're leaving alone so if you've got problems with deer then um, if you don't want to put a deer fence up maybe you should just and choose the plants that they avoid and don't choose any of the things that I've planted because they're eating all of those. Um, anyway, let me show you. So in the bed behind me, we've got two Cheshire Roses and what's happening is the deer are eating the bits of the Cheshire Rose that they can get to and I'm getting very few buds on these roses this year because they basically can get to quite a lot of it and then anything that's left, I'm getting a few roses but they've mostly eaten everything, which is really annoying. So also surrounding this bed here is where we have the small lavender hedge. It's fairly new and I also um, filmed a video of me pruning it and how I prune it and you can find that on my channel as well. I'm so sorry about all the planes. I, there's nothing I can do to avoid it. There are a lot of people around here who like to fly around in very small planes quite low and it just makes a racket. So um, I'm going to persevere rather than um, what I do normally which is stopping and starting again um, and I'm just going to try and talk louder. <laughs> the other thing that I have got copious amounts of in this flower bed behind me are nigella and all this nigella is self-seeded. I may have let a few more plants stay there than I should have done so maybe I should have thinned them a bit because I've got a lot of nigella but actually the nigella are one thing that the deer are leaving alone and so I'm really glad for the colour that I've got in this bed that I'd normally have from the roses um, so actually it was a good thing it's a good mistake that I made this year not to thin the nigella but you'll see that there are copious amounts of blooms they're absolutely gorgeous the other thing that is self-seeded in this bed is um, Chinese forget-me-not. I think it's called something like Cygna Glossum and it's the pink variety that I have here and I planted some in this bed last year and it was kind of a little bit weedy. I don't think it got enough sun but for some reason this year the seeds that drop off which are really sticky so if you ever plant this stuff the seeds are really sticky they'll stick to your cats or pets if you've got them they'll stick to your clothes and your gardening gloves and so you'll find this popping up all over your garden as the seeds drop off but um, I mean they're really cute seeds they're quite hard but they're one of those really sticky seeds anyway um, they have self-seeded in this bed and I think they look fabulous because They've done exactly what I wanted them to do last year and I didn't quite get that kind of display last year. 
So the other thing that's looking really good at the moment is the salvia and I'll put up on the screen which one it is because I always have to check, I can never remember. But this salvia I cut back, um, not to ground level, but I kind of cut it back to the main framework, like really quite hard. Um, early on every spring and then you wouldn't believe how much growth I get out of this plant and what happens is it's got these sort of pops of pink colour like bright pink colour and it looks really good in this bed where it's predominantly softer tones and then you just get this pop of dark pink and I really like that and they're looking fabulous at this time of year I'm really enjoying them and I will definitely be keeping those in this bed so um, next door's gardeners have decided to start strimming so I'm going to talk quite loudly in the hope that I can talk over the racket that they're going to be making um, otherwise I may have to do some of this filming later um, so the other thing that's in this bed behind me are some gorgeous astrantia I think they're the white astrantia again I'll put up the variety on the screen but they have put on a really good display um, all through the spring and even though they're fading a bit now and they're not quite as white as they were they still look good the flower heads are really really pretty so I leave them whereas the aquilegia that's self-seeded in this bed and did look really good it was I had some really pretty varieties and I'll try and cut photos of those in because I know I took some but the, those seed heads are not as pretty and I will be cutting those back in the next few days so the other thing that I love in this flower bed and I've had here right from the very beginning are some gorgeous penstemons with really dark stems and sort of just off-white pinky very very soft pink flowers and I really love this penstemon it comes back for me every single year and it's looking absolutely gorgeous at the moment and doing what I need it to do right at the back of the border it's got some really dark leaves as well and those look really good it's a lovely contrast and the other thing that I have in this bed, and I have had for a few years, are alliums. And these are the really massively large-headed alliums. I don't know what's happened. There should be about 20 in this bed. And I've had maybe four or five of them come up. And I'm not sure what's going on. I'm going to have to check the soil and see whether the bulbs have rotted. Maybe it got too wet here because we get the runoff from the glass roof. Um, so I'm not sure why this year in particular the alliums didn't do what they're supposed to do. The other thing that we've got in this bed here are some blue salvias and they're absolutely gorgeous. They're a really deep blue. They are a little bit buried this year amongst everything else. Um, and then at the back of the border here behind me, there is a gorgeous peony that has done its thing this year. And I probably need to give it a feed because the leaves are looking a little bit sad. I think this does happen to peonies after they've flowered, um, but I'd like to just give it a little boost for next year anyway. And then at the front of the bed here, I've got a gorgeous white scabious and it's been flowering beautifully. And that's one of the scabious that the deer haven't found yet. So that's my only scabious that's in flower at the moment. And in front of that, I've got some gorgeous wallflowers that have been going for months. But it's just such a beautiful colour. It's got like purples and apricots and pinks. And I really, really love it. And I highly recommend it because it's perennial. So it's just going to come back year after year and it will flower. You don't have to do anything with it apart from, you know, trim it. Um, but it will flower just when you need that spark. It's, um, it's there when you have the tulips and the daffodils and it's still flowering now in July. So um, I think it's a really valuable plant to have in your border. <laughs> so the sun's come out now. So I'm just trying to find a little bit of shade here on the patio. It's absolutely glorious, this patio. This is where we planted um, the Cursus Ilex, which are the Holm Oaks. And um, they are looking really fantastic. I'll put that up on the screen but they've bushed out most of them there's one that's looking a bit scraggly and one that seems to be um, not growing upwards very much but it's going to be time to prune those soon and I'll post a video when we do that and interestingly enough what I didn't realize when I went to see my mum um, in France in April May went to see my mum in May there has been a tree that I've admired in her garden ever since she's lived there. They, my parents lived in the south of France for many years now. And I've loved this tree, but I don't know why I never really found out what it was. I think I assumed it was 
you know, only something that could grow in the Mediterranean. And um, they live right down in the south of France on the coast. And it's absolutely gorgeous and baking hot. And so I just um, discounted it as something that I could grow here. But as you probably guessed, as it turns out, that is a holm oak. And I only realised when I studied it carefully, um, when I was, I didn't study it carefully, I just happened to look at it properly this year. Um, and um, it's been pruned into the most fantastic umbrella shape. I'm going to try and get her to send me a photo of it and I'll put it up. But that is exactly what I want these trees here on the patio to do. I don't know if it's going to take me 25 years to get to that stage. I'm really hoping it doesn't. But if it does, you know, a garden is always a work in progress and that's just one of those things. But I have high hopes for these trees around my patio now because that tree is beautiful and I've admired it for ages, not knowing what it was and not knowing that the trees I'd planted around my patio are exactly the same one. So as we round the corner here on the patio, we have the eucalyptus hedge that we pollarded in a video that you can find on my channel. So if you're interested in learning how to cut your eucalyptus down and you know find out what it does after you've you've done that um, in order to make sure that it doesn't get too overgrown then do take a look at that video but we have this gorgeous eucalyptus hedge which um, probably needs a light pruning it's kind of growing over into the flower bed a bit too much and I definitely need to take some off the top and I want to again create some of that really young growth that has the smaller leaves so I will be in the next week or two um, taking my shears to the eucalyptus and I'll put that on a video when I do it um, just so I can show you but you'll see it's a little bit overgrown and in front of that we've got the gorgeous giant scabious which I love so much this year um, is the first year that the giant scabious have been really leaning out and I think it's got something to do with the eucalyptus. Um, again, so the eucalyptus is leaning to the flower bed which is causing the giant scabious to reach for the light by moving away from the eucalyptus. And it's, I kind of always knew this wasn't a great place for the giant scabious but it looked amazing last year and the year before and this is the first year when it's kind of encroaching on the patio a little bit. I'm not sure I really mind except that it's always covered in bees and bees you know you don't want to be brushing up against them too much really because that might irritate them and then you'll get stung but apart from that the scabious looks amazing. It is smothering another penstemon that I adore because it's got these kind of soft electric blue flowers and it's I think it's my favorite penstemon so um, the penstemon that we have in this flower bed aren't looking great because they're being um, shaded out but um, the, the bed on the um, south side of the patio the penstemon that I transplanted there last year are looking amazing and they're exactly the same ones so they just need a bit more light I think and at the uh, yes in the middle of this flower bed here on the west side of the patio is another Cheshire Rose and this one seems to have more flowers and I can only guess that maybe the deer didn't wander over here so much. I can't think why. It again has the lavender hedge which is being smothered a bit by everything leading over and it's also got some of those gorgeous wallflowers. So it needs a massive tidy up. I can see all sorts of things in there, including um, a seedling of the giant scabious, which I will transplant into another part of the garden. And then in the far corner on the end of the eucalyptus hedge, I've got a rosemary that I kind of snuck in there um, a few years ago. And I actually use this for culinary purposes. I use it when I'm cooking, um, but it does have some lovely blue flowers if I let it go to flower. And I also plan on taking some cuttings this year so that I can have some more of the rosemary hedge because it does quite well in this garden. And I like the fact that it's evergreen, it smells wonderful, and uh, it's just a nice structure to have because you can prune it as well. So I'm definitely going to take some cuttings of that. So this bed on the south side of the patio is a little bit different. And the reason that we've had to plant it differently is because it's at a lower level than the bed that's behind it and so the back of this border gets quite shaded when I have tall plants growing on the higher bed and also because I guess it just doesn't get direct sunshine in the same way that the other beds do so you can see that it's kind of got a bit of sun at the front of it at the moment but as the sun moves around because this is south facing as the sun moves around during the day this bed will become quite shaded. So I've had to choose slightly more carefully what I grow in there and I have learnt from some mistakes. Um, so the first thing I did was last year I planted some astilbe at the back of the border. 
um, because they're shade loving and <laughs> unfortunately they're just too short so you can't see them so I'm going to have to dig those up and put them somewhere else and if I can find some taller astilbe I'll put those there otherwise I will search out something taller to put at the back of the bed um, because they're just being smothered and it's a real shame because they're beautiful. Um, the other thing that I've got in this bed that I don't have in the other beds um, is something called, I think it's called Francoa and I really love it. It's um, normally got more flowers than it has this year and that could be because I haven't fed this bed and I should have done but we've been away so much I just haven't got round to it so I will be feeding this bed um, but it's probably too late for those blooms this year but they're kind of bristly and bushy and purple and I really like them. And the other thing I will say about that plant is that you have to stake it and I haven't this year and so it's sprawling everywhere. Um, again, I've just been away too much and you know, it, it makes it sound like I'm just traveling loads, but I, there are things that I haven't managed to get done in the garden. So this bed also has in it um, a load of self-seeded verbena banariensis, banariensis um, and it's created this gorgeous purpley haze which I really love. It's clearly very happy here um, even though the roots are in shade for quite a lot of the year. And the other thing that I have in this bed is Astrantia. It's the same Astrantia that I've got opposite and Astrantia does like shade so it's doing really well in here. I also had some Gara last year but I can't see that it's coming back again so I don't think it's particularly happy. It probably needs more sun but I just really like Gara for like the wispy um, paleness of those flowers that look like little butterflies but well, that's what I think they look like and so I'd really like to plant some gara somewhere around the patio um, I will try and find a better spot for it though um, I also have some white geraniums and they have flushed and look beautiful but I think I missed the flush and now there are just a few flowers left but um, they don't look too scraggly so I probably won't cut them back yet because they're at the front of the border because they're lower than the other plants. So I'm going to leave those as they are until they start to look more scraggly. So the other thing that's happened is that I've got three self-seeded stocks here and they must have self-seeded from some stocks that I planted in this bed last year and the deer haven't found them but the deer found every single one of the 70 or so stocks that we planted before we went away and I came back and the deer had eaten the tops of all of them so we instead of having a bed of stocks this bed is now completely empty. I don't know if you grow stocks but if you don't know uh, once you cut the top off a stock it won't flower because it's it's a one and done so it literally creates one flower bloom and then that's it so if you pinch your stocks they won't flower if the deer eat the tops they won't flower so I mean I could have cried when I came back from holiday and saw they'd eaten them all but hey ho anyway I've got three spindly looking stocks in this bed that self-seeded from last year I think they're probably singles they don't look like they're going to do very much and the other thing that I've got a great swathe of over here is verbascum. I think it's called Summer Skies and it is beautiful when it's in flower. At this point where it's practically finished it kind of, I mean there's still some colour but I'm probably going to deadhead all of that in the hope that I get some more spires later in the season. The problem with verbascum is I find it gets eaten um, really quickly like the flower stalks get eaten rather than the leaves by caterpillars every year. This year I only picked off a few caterpillars then we went away on holiday but actually it doesn't look like they got decimated in quite the same way they normally are by the caterpillars. It looks like they had loads of flower spikes and um, they did really well so that's actually a bonus that I've had this year is that the verbascum have done particularly well. So all the clarkia that I planted in my nursery bed has been eaten by the deer but I have just discovered in this bed here that there's a clarkia that they didn't munch. And this is self-seeded from last year, how fantastic is that? That's made me so happy. I also think right at the back of the border here, which I've just spotted, is some Nicotiana from last year. So that has also self-seeded. I mean, thank goodness for things that self-seed because the deer don't seem to get them. Sounds like next door have started up their strimmer again. And so I'm gonna to have to cut this short, but I will mention that on the very end of this bed over here, just by my pots of dahlias, um, I have got a um, snapdragon 
a pink snapdragon that's been there for two years now and I do find with my snapdragons that if they're in the right spot they just come back again the next year and that's one of them and that's making me very happy because I haven't had to do anything and the deer didn't eat it so yay for the snapdragons <laughs> So I think I've pretty much done the whole round of the patio area here and actually I think what's happened is because I've been talking so much it's turned into quite a long video. So I'm going to cut it short here for today and then I'll do the rest of the back garden in a separate video and what I'll also do is what I promised and I will um, film you know the little pruning jobs and tidying up jobs that I'm going to do and any propagating that I'm going to do I'll film all of that and upload it to the YouTube channel so that you can see that also in case any of that's helpful to you. I really wanted to show you what the patio area looked like first because it's the area that's got the most flowers because I think basically the deer have been on this area the least um, so the rest of the garden has literally been munched away and I will show you what's going on there in the next video so if you've enjoyed this and you want to see more of the garden then do subscribe to my channel and follow along with me but thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time hi everyone it's Annette and welcome back to Cotto Verdi let's just wait for the plane to go by Another little two-seater. Hi everyone, it's Annette. Just go on, get a move on, fly past. So let me show you around the back garden. So let me show you around the back garden. Why does that sound rude? So how interesting is that? Not very. So, it's interesting to me. I'm interested. Oh dear. I'm going to have to come back later because I doubt you can hear me over the racket from next door. <laughs> Creates one flower boom, bloom, one flower. So it literally 